Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Hallie, I'm 27, love to read, love to fangirl, and I'm so excited that you're here. For this video, we're going to be reading books by my favorite authors. I have two books I for sure want to read and then the third is kind of up in the air. The first book we're going to be reading is Forging Silver Into Stars by Bridget Kemmerer. She is such a recent favorite. She wrote the Defy the Night trilogy. She wrote A Curse for True Love. That's its own trilogy. I have not read that yet. She's writing this trilogy now which is a follow-up to A Curse for True Love and I definitely should have read that one first but I don't know. Her characters are always kind of like facing these moral dilemmas through the lens of fantasy and the politics of their fantasy realm. Sometimes the characters are on different sides and they have to like reckon with their differences. It's just like so emotionally interesting, psychologically interesting. The second read is the final book in the series A Sky Beyond the Storm by Salva Tahir. If you've been watching my videos this series has taken me by storm. It's changed my life, I think. The writing is up to par with my favorite series ever. Where is it? Throne of Glass, which is like the ultimate compliment I could ever give. I'm going to be devastated when the series is over, so I'm putting it off, but we will be reading it in this video. I was looking at my shelves and I'm also looking at my top books ever on Goodreads to see if I even have books left from my favorite authors that I haven't read yet. I do have some Rick Riordan books left, but that's like such a summer fandom for me. And then I I have two Shadowhunter books left and I have been in such a Shadowhunter mood, but that's like my spring fandom. <laughs> I'm such a seasonal reader. I also requested an arc for Abby Jimenez's new book, but I haven't been approved yet. So maybe if I get approved for that, what are the odds? <laughs> but as for now, I am 100, oh, kind of farther than I thought. I'm almost 200 pages into this book and I wanted to give a little update. So Jax and Callan are best friends. They live in a really small city. There's not a lot of traffic, not a lot of people come through. He works as a blacksmith and she works as a baker. They're both very short on money and they help each other out. And then we have Tycho, our third POV, who works for the king of the whole realm. There's this kind of underlying political thing happening too where some people support magic, some people hate magic. They have to deal with their beliefs and how they feel about magic and how that affects their relationships. <sighs> It's so good. I'm pretty sure the prince and the princess of the realm are our two main characters in her first ever trilogy. It's like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This book was so fantasy coded and then it mentioned that she was from Washington DC. And I was like, <laughs> it's giving when I read The Cruel Prince and it said the word microwave. And at the beginning I was so confused. <laughs> between two characters and the POV we're getting is one of them saying he wasn't very handsome. I'm like, it's okay. Like not that he needs to be this gorgeous, objectively handsome person, but shouldn't she think he's handsome if they're having a romance? Is that like an Easter egg that things aren't gonna work out? Or is that just like, she's not attracted to him? I'm almost 60% through. It's been good, but I feel like this is primarily character development and like relationship building. And I'm feeling a little bit of a lack in the plot. I would love for more to happen though in the last like 5% more has happened. This isn't really like a high stakes fantasy in the world. There's not really a crisis. So I'm curious to see where it goes. I would say this feels a little bit younger than the Defy the Night series feels when it comes to the characters and how they're acting and stuff. As far as the character development goes, it has been good. And the writing has been really good, very easy to digest, but there is a little bit of a miscommunication trope going on. I just, I hate that. I wanna bang their heads together and be like, just talk it through 
through, talk it out. And it's like everybody, it's like every character involved. They keep mentioning all these wars and all these things that have happened that was so crazy in their land. But then we're not getting a lot of plot in this book specifically. I know some of that is on me because there is a trilogy before this one in the same world, but I heard you could read this as a standalone. So I'm like, I want the battles to come now into this book. Yes, I love the characters, but they're not really doing anything yet. Whatever happens in the ending, and depending on how epic the ending is, that will affect my rating. So I'm just gonna keep chugging along. We're in it now. Hopefully I can read a lot more tonight and finish it tomorrow. <laughs> Gosh, I just got insane full body chills listening to you're losing me. Help, boy, do I have updates. Finish this. First 30%, I was like, we're building up the world. It's so good. I'm loving the characters. And then the next like 40%, I was like, okay, we're still getting a lot with the characters. And I was starting to feel a little bit of a lack with the plot. And that had really hit me last night when I was updating. I was really right there. I was thinking, okay, I don't know if this is gonna be like very action packed, which is fine, but I was feeling like four star vibes. And then I had 30% left went to read it last night it was so good it was so good that I had put the book down to go to sleep and then I picked it up again and I was like I'll just read like a few more pages finish the book the ending of this was so unreal that I really wanted to give it five stars but I do think I'm gonna take off 0.5 for the middle when it was lagging a little bit I loved it and I've already requested the arc for book two I'm really not in my lucky girl arc era my net galley percentage is at 100% but I swear I only get approved for arcs when my percentage is horrible. So there's two sort of romantic couples in here. And I absolutely loved the main couple, which is two of the POVs we get. And then the other POV had their romantic interest. I was really not vibing with that storyline, but it went somewhere that I liked. <laughs> I'm just very excited to keep reading and see where it goes. I would definitely recommend this. I would say read the Defy the Night trilogy first, and if you find that you like her writing and you want more, than this. As you have seen, I also went to Barnes & Noble today because I did remember another favorite author who has a new release that I haven't read yet. That is going to be the next book I read for this video. I was really torn on if I should read this book first or the last An Ember in the Ashes book first. I think if I read A Sky Beyond the Storm first, I would really be setting myself up for failure with this book I got because I just know the slump is going to be astronomical. It would really set a bad tone for any other book. And I'm accepting that that's going to happen so I decided I should probably read this one first to give it a chance. I got The 13th Child by Erin A. Craig. I absolutely love House of Salt and Sorrows and Small Favors by her. However, she did make a second House of Salt and Sorrows book that I gave three stars and that was her last release before this one. So I'm a little nervous because I feel like that lowered my expectations a bit, but it's stunning. I have been very excited to pick it up, but I haven't been letting myself because I have a Libby hold of the audiobook and I was like, we're just gonna wait every time I went to Barnes, I did not buy it. I was so strong. And then the plot thickens, okay? Because I was on my health app yesterday and it says seven day limit exceeded. Your headphone audio exposure has gone over the limit. I don't know why this never crossed my mind. I never thought there was too much headphone time, too much audiobook time. Apparently it damages your ears, which that's common sense, I fear. I'm like, maybe I should do some eyeball reading to give my ears a break. The Libby hold is still seven weeks away, but maybe that's for the best. Erin Craig is exceptional at fairy tale retellings. Lots of gothic fantasy. The vibes are always deliciously amazing and atmospheric in her books. And I guess this one is based off of the Grimm's Brothers dark fairy tale, Godfather Death. I've never heard of it. This is about Hazel, who is raised by the God of Death. He gives her a gift to know how to cure anyone she comes across. He's like, you're gonna be a healer. And then she meets this prince and he's supposed to die but she can cure him but if she does that it'll go against the will of death himself and so we get into all of that I did get two more books at Barnes so to complete the haul I know I said I wasn't gonna get it I really wasn't 
but then I saw it and it's so beautiful. If you haven't heard, I have the paperback of the first two in this series. I absolutely love this series. It's the reason I fell in love with Bridget Cameron. And the paperback for this doesn't come out until July, but I just gave this five stars, bald like a baby, the last 100 pages. I feel like I am linked to this story. I have a soul bond to this story. So when I saw it at Barnes, I was like, you're coming home with me, period. The fact that Cassandra Clare and Stephanie Garber have done blurbs for this book is just chef's kiss and then naturally in this book I fell in love with the world building so I decided to start at the beginning and before I finish this series I want to read this whole trilogy the funny story is I actually used to have this first book I had it on my bookshelf for years I had soft DNF it I don't know why I think it was like post a court of silver flames and that was the biggest book slump of my life I literally would drive around my neighborhood and like cry listening to music I was so down bad so I think I tried to read this during that dark time and nothing stood a chance around then so unfortunately Unfortunately, I had given it away and I had to rebuy it. I'm gonna start this one today. Stay tuned for updates. I'm so excited. <laughs> on two books because I have actually started this one and I'm reading this one. Like I said, very bad idea because I love this one so much more. And so now I'm not being fair to this one. This book has been a little bit of a slog fest for me. To be fair, I have exclusively been reading books with magic and court politics, wars, potential battles and fighting and found family. This is like just a book about a girl who has a very lonely childhood, who is waiting for her godfather death to come adopt her and there's like a lot of tragedy. Vibes are giving, not gonna lie. Vibes are always giving in an Aaron A. Craig book. And once I got about halfway, it really started to pick up. There actually is a little bit of court politics in this one. She is now far into her journey, trying to heal someone, but not sure if she should or if she can. It has been so funny though, because aesthetically it reminds me of Belladonna. Belladonna is lonely girl who knows death, except death is the love interest. And this one is lonely girl who knows death but death is her father. I was like, wow, the range. I have 200 pages left. I am enjoying it. I would say we're sitting at about a four star rating. It could go up depending on the ending because I can feel the action building, which I would love. But I did happen to start this because I need this book like I need air. I'm devouring it. Book four to one of the best series I've read all year, probably the best. I'm 150 pages into this one. There's a little bit of a new romance that has been developing over the last few books. We're getting crumbs. This is very much like romantic crumbs, but that makes me even more feral than like full on romance scenes. In my perfect world, I finish the 13th child and get really far into a sky beyond the storm because it's Tuesday, but I don't have a launch because I'm doing a bigger launch next week for Black Friday. So I just have a lot of time on my hands. I also had the most magical thing ever happen to me. I have recently made a notes app of fantasies that are on my radar that I really want to read. Among the top was The Bridge Kingdom, which I had thought was YA, but I think it's a new adult fantasy. In my head, I'm like, okay, Okay, I'll finish all the books that I have now and then I will go buy it. There's a little library that is super close to my house and I only check it if I happen to be walking by because it's predominantly children's books. I think a younger family lives there. But I was walking by with my dogs and it was like the most beautiful night, beautiful sunset. So I happened to check it. Let's roll the highlights. <laughs> odds. I had already dropped off some books at two other little libraries earlier that day and I hadn't found anything I wanted and then also, this is gonna be a long series. I wanna say it's around like six books with not all of them out yet, but I love a long series. And then I also got We Hunt the Flame, which was on my YA fantasy master list that people had recommended on Instagram. I honestly don't know what any of these are about yet, and I am just gonna wait and see. I will be reading all three of them very soon, so stay tuned. <laughs>
have finished the book. I liked the second half of this so much more than the first half. It was exciting. <laughs> Do my voices crack? It was atmospheric, it was action-packed, it was romantic. Everything I love in an Aaron Craig book. I think I would have rated this higher if it was just shorter. This could have been up to 200 pages shorter because it's 500 pages. So I feel like 300, 350 would have been perfect. By the ending, I was like, wait, this is amazing. I was super riveted, super into it. Overall, I'm gonna give it a four star. I feel like this is the epitome of a four star read. I was interested, I wanted to finish the book, and. I liked the story, but I didn't feel like crazy emotionally attached to it. I'm so excited because it's only 8 p.m., which means I still have some time to read before bed tonight. And um, <laughs> me and this book, we're gonna be spending some time together. hard book to binge in a day because it's so painful. I don't know if I'm strong enough. <laughs> I got a text from my mom. She's reading book three right now, which is A Reaper at the Gates. He says, I can't handle book three. It's stressing me out. I said, it's so brutal. Thinking that would be it. She goes, there is no break, no room to breathe between tragedies. All the favorites are fighting a losing battle. I think I'm going to be sick. It's really taking its toll. So like, if I haven't warned you enough about this series, which I probably haven't, it's devastating. I think I'm gonna end up taking an extra day to soak this in because not only is it tragic, but it's also the last book in the series and I don't want it to be over. Kind of feels like finishing all the young dudes. It's like, oh, I've just read the best fanfic of my life, but I've never been more sad in my life at the same time. But as for updates, let it be known that Helene Aquila is my life, my world, my soul, everything I wanna be, she's my hero. So I guess that would mean she's my favorite character, but I love our three main characters all so much. <laughs> I have some bad news. And by bad, I mean soul crushing, but I'm trying to be really cool about it. As I was reading this, the feelings were growing of, wow, this is still so devastating. Because book two and three were incredibly devastating. And it's just been like this downhill slope. I felt like we hit rock bottom earlier in the series, but I think we went lower than rock bottom, but I was like, I tr I'm trusting the process. Surely it will work out. I just don't think this book ever, like there was a resolution, obviously it's the end of a four book series, but it didn't resolve my feelings. Like it didn't hit. There are honestly so many plot points that I'm trying to unwrite and erase from my mind. And like, this has just never happened to me before where I'm reading a series and the very last book is less than a four star. Like honestly, there's such a drop in my brain chemicals, my happy brain chemicals, because the first three books were infinity stars. And so I just assumed this would be, but this is a three star, which is like objectively not a bad rating. I try to never give books lower than a three star and unless I'm like insanely passionate. Usually I'll just DNF at that point because the author wrote the book. That is so impressive. I saw an interview where Saba Tahir was saying she bases her books off of real life experiences, hence how devastating they are because real life is devastating. And that's absolutely true. And I love how she does that. But I also think life has a lot of hope too. And there's like good things. For me, it was just this spiraling towards doom. And instead of like pulling up in the nick of time, it just felt like a crash landing. That's not to say that the series wasn't like resolved because it was. I'm trying not to spoil anything. I just don't like how it was resolved. <laughs> you know, when there's a character and they're like so defined and so consistent throughout a whole series. And then suddenly at the end, I'm like, I don't even know you anymore. Who are you? And that happened with my favorite character. So they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really. Anyway.
Anyway, I'm being really cool about it. I'm definitely gonna read her newer book that just came out. I'm gonna take a little break and mourn what could have been. Then I will read that one. <laughs> what a way to end the video. If I had to rank them, I would say Forging Silver into Stars was my favorite read and then The 13th Child and then The Sky Beyond the Storm. Fine, but you just can't get into Let it. Let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these books. I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys. Thank you.